Iran has agreed to let the IAEA replace cameras at one of its nuclear sites. The Karaj facility was damaged in an attack several months ago, an attack which has been blamed on Israel. Well, the disagreement had threatened to scupper the nuclear talks which continue in Vienna. However, the UN's nuclear watchdog will only have limited access to the footage at that site. To talk more about that, we're joined by Barbara Slavin from the Atlantic Council. And thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Tonight. So, um, first up, is this a concession by Iran? Is this a signal that they are now willing to allow some monitoring of uh, the nuclear facilities? Well, it's a very small concession. I think, uh, once again, Iran realized that if it did not reach an agreement with the IAEA, it would be facing probable censure. Uh, the, the U.S. has threatened to call for an emergency session of the Board of Governors of the IEA before Christmas uh, to censure Iran if this was not resolved. So they're doing the minimum required, I think, to stave that off. Uh, still, the level of monitoring is not what it should be. It's not what it was under the JCPOA. However, it is it is good news that cameras will be put back in this facility at Courage, uh, which produces centrifuges. Uh, those cameras were damaged in uh, a sabotage attack, which, as you pointed out, has been blamed on Israel, and that was back last summer. So let's talk about the JCPOA then, because the talks uh, are continuing, some stops and starts uh, in Vienna. Uh, there, there is not a great deal of enthusiasm that the deal can be revived. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think that the agreement can be brought back to life? Well, I still hope so. Uh, it obviously doesn't look very good from the opening uh, drafts that were presented by the Iranians, which were very hard line, uh, which were more for less, more sanctions relief for less in the way of rolling back the nuclear program, and that simply won't wash. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Iran needs uh, sanctions relief. Uh, and it needs to be able to trade in particular with its neighbors and with China. And I think here is the key. Uh, the United States is not directly at the table with Iran, but the Iranians have been talking to the Russians, the Chinese. They had a visit from a senior uh, Emirati recently. And I think they understand that if they're really going to be able to improve their economic performance, uh, you mentioned Saudi Arabia and the headlines had a, had a banner a year. Iran has has not. Um, if they're going to improve that record, they're going to need to be able to trade more freely. They're going to need to be able to sell more oil and have access to the international financial system, all of which they lack now. Now, Israel, of course, uh, says it will never allow Iran to uh, to possess a nuclear weapon. And there have been uh, noises about military strikes uh, this week. The Defense Minister Benny Gantz was in Washington last week. Is it only a matter of time, do you think, before Israel goes it alone and strikes these nuclear facilities? I think this has more to do with domestic Israeli politics than it does with any feasible plan. Uh, Israel does not have the capacity to mount uh, the kind of military operation that would be necessary to really set back the Iranian program. It would uh, cause all kinds of collateral damage in terms of radiation that could spread and kill Iranians, that which, which would be a war crime, frankly, would lead to retaliation by Hezbollah. So I think this has more to do with Israeli domestic politics and jockeying. You may have just seen that the United States has told Israel that it will not receive uh, tankers for refueling in midair that Israel had requested until 2024 at the earliest. And the Biden administration is not going to support uh, a military strike. So I think what we're looking at are economic and diplomatic moves if we can't get the JCPOA back on track. So do you think Iran, uh, Israel's concerns about Iran's nuclear program are, are unfounded then? We, we have heard from uh, UN officials that uh, Iran does have more uranium enrichment than it has uh, at any time in the past. Is, is that an unfounded fear? No, it's not. Israeli concerns are not unfounded. Uh, but I still think it's unlikely that Iran would actually develop nuclear weapons. I think what they want is this hedging capacity. So it remains an issue and it remains a, a point of pressure and leverage, particularly with, with the West and with the United States. 
Uh, if Iran were actually to develop nuclear weapons, of course, to use them would be suicidal. Israel uh, has at least 90 nuclear warheads and a second strike capability. So I think the fear is that it would make Iran more influential somehow in the Middle East if it were a nuclear state, uh, a nuclear weapons state, and that that would impinge on Israeli security. But it's, it's sad to say Iran is already influential without nuclear weapons. So I think Israel has other issues. With Iran. Uh, and, and just briefly, um, if, if you could, how important is the, the, the stance of the Gulf states regarding Iran? Because that has changed over the past year, hasn't it? It's very important. And again, I think that parties like the Emiratis in particular, the Omanis, Kuwaitis, others, uh, uh, Qataris, are in a better position to convince Iran that it actually can become part of the region, that it can trade with its neighbors across the Persian Gulf if these sanctions are lifted and if companies in, in that part of the world don't have to worry about the United States prosecuting them in court for sanctions violations. I think they are better messengers of that than the United States or Europe is at this point.